and their iron requirements are, are double what an adult male would be. So what types of nutritional deficiencies do you see as being so common in the adolescents? I think probably one of the most common ones is iron. Yes. Um, particularly amongst girls mm -hmm. um, and particularly once they start their periods. Yeah. Um, and their iron requirements are, are double what an adult male would be. Right. You know, as a teenage girl particularly. Wow. So, and I think it's often a nutrient that's forgotten. Yes. Um, that needs to be replaced. Mm. I think calcium as well. Yes. You know, the, the teenage right years are yeah. really formative years for setting down the foundations of our bone and we forget that it's actually probably the most crucial period of our life for getting enough calcium in our diet and it's really hard if if you are not eating dairy mm -hmm. it is more difficult and again you need to be a lot more conscientious to do that but I think it's definitely a nutrient that the awareness of it just drops off yeah. in the teenage years whereas the requirements increase quite exponentially. Now if you have a child who is very aware of the environment, does want to give up meat, does want to give up dairy, but they are quite picky. What do we do then? Because then you're that parent who is saying, I support you to be who you want to be, but nagging and nagging. You must eat this. You must eat that. You must eat this. Come on. You've got mm. to got to eat it. Do we just take the view? OK, I'm not going to nag because that's going to have um, negative effects. I'm just going to supplement. It's a very difficult line as a parent. <laughs> it's a fine line. I think you're right.